Hi, it's Garrett Finney sitting in the parking lot of Taxa, less sweaty than usual because it's fall. Um, and I'm here to answer questions and to give you tours of our uh, woolly bear, which I'm sitting on at our Tiger Moth, which is over there. Um, I don't know what's going on with you all. We're excited here. We're going to a rally this week in Colorado where it might be snowing, which will be exciting and meet some of our taxa folks and have a photo shoot um, and uh, sit around a campfire. That's the hope. Uh, whether it's freezing cold and we're out, not around the campfire, sitting inside our mantis with the furnace, we don't know yet. Um, I'm supposed to be chatty now. Why, is, why did you develop the woolly bear? Um, so if you've been following this or our company, we have four products um, all about camping machines, adventure equipment, the mobile habitat thing that we're trying to brand. Um, and I'm, you know, the, the mantis is the parent and the cricket and the tiger moth and the woolly bear uh, in a legal way. The, and we think of them as a family because the mantis holds four adult sized people or two adults and two teenagers. The cricket is two adults and, <coughs> excuse me, um, a kid or two and a dog. Uh, the tiger moth tends to be two people, although you can put a rooftop tent on it and have a guest house on top. And this, uh, you can't get inside at all unless you climb inside the rooftop tent. This is about um, camping. So we've optimized it as a field kitchen, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but it's also, you could use it for a day as a field kitchen or you could get eight bikes on it or two bikes and two kayaks, uh, a big rooftop tent, a small rooftop tent. This one, you can configure in all sorts of ways to, uh, to suit you. Um, as a designer, I always thought about camping, but then also what, does, what might a bike team need during the day or someone who's running some rivers in their kayaks or canoe, um, how you could have a great picnic during the day and a great drink at the end of the day um, and bounce down a trail and be alone or with friends or tailgating at a football game. Obviously, we don't really care what you do with it. That's the point, is that you tell us what you do with it so that we learn more and uh, figure things out. Um, so I'm sitting on this trailer. This one is not an RV. We sell it direct from our website. Uh, and we have made a few changes so we can sell it directly and uh, ship it pretty to your house or close to because it's just less than eight feet long when you take off the tongue, and that means we can put it on the pallet and get it to you um, pretty easily. I'm sitting on the step bumper. Um, like all our products, there are various holes in various places. Uh, like all our products, we have a step bumper. So you sit on it, you stand on it, you strap things to it, you load things on it. Um, with this, it's really useful to be get up on top of it because you can sing and dance up here. Uh, what did I do a few years ago? If you're old enough, you know the Hamel Camel figure skating move to do this. But really, you should imagine yourself uh, looking for birds who are at a rock festival, seeing the band, and no one else can see it. Or climbing up to set up your tent or get your gear, um, whatever it is. The thing's kind of a jungle gym, and it's a jungle gym for you and your kids and your stuff. Um, it's hard even to write the owner's manual for this product because there are so many ways to use it and to, uh, to load it. So in all our photos, because we're lazy or we've forgotten a wrench, we had the rooftop tent on top of the, what we call the bridge up here um, and often show stuff, boxes or coolers or a kayak slid risers. under here. What's that? Risers. The risers, yes. Only I call it the bridge. Everyone else at Taxa calls it the risers. Um, but you could also put the tent down here and the bikes or kayaks up there. And, and we have an accessory hitch. I have a, a bike rack stuffed in this hastily. So that's when I say you can bring a lot of stuff. Four bikes and a rooftop tent and two kayaks or whatever your adventure is. The point is that you get to do it. Um, we have the step bumpers on both sides with all the holes, people strapped folding chairs. We have the big spare tire so you can't get stranded anywhere. 
We have stabilizing checks for when you get somewhere so it doesn't shake when you climb on it. Um, and it's just made to hold stuff. Uh, we have a big cargo compartment over here with some useful holes in it that you can put a bungee net. Uh, often when I've gone out with my kids, I have bike helmets and a bungee net up here and bike pumps and duffel bags or whatever our camping gear is. Um, we have this big empty hole. Sorry, I'll talk about the big empty hole from the other side because it's easier to see. Um, you can see that even with the tent set up, I can be almost six feet tall and standing under here. I mean, it actually gives you a, a shaded shelter area if you're camping in the rain. They make accessories for these tents that we don't happen to sell, but where you can attach an outdoor changing room surrounding this too. Um, so this holds up. We tried to think about what people would have for dimensions. So for duffel bags or scuba tanks or just big messy stuff, and with that bungee stuff, you can get your fishing rod above the heavy stuff, for instance, if you don't want it to get smooshed. Um, um, like all our products, you can charge its battery for the solar panel, which is kind of mocked up here. Um, the trailer has a battery to run lights and charge phones and computers and other accessories, nighttime lighting. Um, which rides up here, and a rough and tough gravel guard, and a, a swivel jack to give you a little bit more ground clearance up here when you're towing it behind your Jeep or your Subaru, stuff like that. <coughs> There's an awning, which we haven't set up in the parking lot, um, which you may be familiar with, or you can see pictures of on our website or Instagram. The awning unzips and comes out to about here. You can be about six foot four over here, but right at the cooking area, about six foot one before your uh, head hits the fabric here. And we've designed this side to carry stuff, but really to be a optimized as a field. So this is your kitchen counter and the place your camp stove might be parked and stored while you're driving. A lot of standard plastic boxes fit in here. You can even get some that are exactly make these two compartments into a drawer. And little nooks and crannies to store whatever it is. Sharp knives, dull knives, ropes, insect repellent, pots and pans, silverware, just, just stuff. And then over here we have the light switches and a voltmeter and a USB outlet. So there are light switches um, both under the trailer as a red light for sort of nighttime safety and knowing where things are. And then there are lights lighting up your kitchen counter hidden in here. And then each of the storage compartments has a light. In the 2020 model, we've wired up this. We used to call this the cooler drawer, but now it's the 12 volt refrigerator or cooler drawer. Um, so this is a fridge by Truma to keep your uh, delectable food and drinks as cold as possible. Um, again, if you're not needing a cooler or a fridge, you can put whatever the hell you want in here. So that closes up. I mentioned the big void area, which is sized. You don't know what you're going to put here. It's sized for things like NATO cans, so you could line up the, about 25 gallons of water in cherry cans or extra fuel cans or another cooler or firewood or a wet a wet a wet wetsuit or a, anything you want we know that there are lots of things that you want to keep secure when you're driving but that are kind of nasty to have in any compartment that you have to clean out so there's a drain in the bottom of that and uh we make we make stuff i mentioned all the holes for strapping down things to this cargo deck but there are holes on the risers also to hang things, to hang a lantern, an extra lantern, to hang keys, to coil rope, to tie a rope to so you can tie it to a tree for a, a clothesline, something like that. This trailer weighs about 900 pounds um, and you can tow it with most anything. And this uh, is narrow like a Jeep and it's in a garage 
and people take it really far away uh, and have adventures. So uh, we're showing a two-person tent up here, a, a, a three-person or even a four-person tent could go up here. With small trailers, how you load them is important. So uh, that's when I mentioned all the possibilities, how the tent could actually be back here and you could have lighter things up there. That's up to you and where you're driving and, uh, and how you've loaded the trailer. Will you talk about the multiple risers? Sure. Um, so we sell the trailer with two risers and uh, they're kind of modular in the, and so it's, a riser is like a bridge. It goes up and over and across the trailer. The bolt holes that hold it on are spaced here so that you can put them anywhere along this whole length along both sides to really string it out and put canoes up there or lumber or uh, we don't know. Um, and these are rated for all our rooftop tent loads. So that's about, I don't know, 180 pounds when you're driving. But once you're parked and you have your stabilizing jacks, we're happy to have a four person tent up there to be totally stable and not shake around. <coughs> Um, what else do I tell you about this? There's one more storage compartment I haven't showed you yet. <coughs> so the last storage compartment is down here. Um, when I've gone camping this, it tends to be all my kitchen stuff and spices and cans of soup are in here, but my bulky stuff like chips or boxes of pasta or cereal, whatever, and uh, bags of charcoal, I don't know, whatever it is. Big compartment down here too. Goes all the way back around the corner to here. Um, and the two level step bumper, which can be very useful for setting up the tent. What's the biggest tent you can put up? What's the biggest tent? I mean, I think they make four-person tents, so that, that fits here. You just end up having a riser. You space this riser further back to accommodate that. Um, <coughs> and as I said before, you, you think about the, the loading. A four-person tent's obviously heavier than a two-person tent. So you, can, you just want to make adjustments or um, put the weight forward or backward down here to be ever more aerodynamic and stable when you're driving, whether you're driving as fast as the speed limit or driving 10 miles an hour on a, a wonky dirt road. Um, so I've seen people with bike racks back here. I've seen people with, uh, I don't even know what they're called, the types of luggage deck racks. <coughs> I'm sure someone will put a dirt bike back here. Um, the trailer can handle it, but as I, as I keep mentioning, in a small trailer, if you put too much weight back here, you want to you always want about 10 or 15% of your trailer's weight to be on the tongue for best handling. So if you put something heavy back here, you want to put something heavy up there too. So for instance, if you had a dirt bike or a three coolers because you were going to a tailgate, you might put all your, you know, your extra water in the front of the storage compartment. And that's just for handling. It's pretty easy to do, figure out. Uh, what else? So uh, I don't know who you are out there. Me and my son have done the White Rim Trail with this. Um, so we had a, which is in Canyonlands National Park. It's a 90 mile Jeep trail that's semi technical. It's certainly the steepest uphill and downhill I've ever gone. So we bounced this for 90 miles with bikes and camped. I think, I think my ass is making a noise. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, so it's, it's been through it and it's always inspiring to see people's Instagram feeds when we get photos of where these things are and whether it's snowing outside or they're hunting or fishing or hanging out with their families or there's two kids sticking their heads out there because it's the coolest tree house in the land. Um, Did you get up in it? I could get up there and demonstrate sleeping. I'm always happy to demonstrate that. Should I be explaining how rooftop tents sure. work? Mm -hmm. So if you're not familiar with a rooftop tent, it's, it sets up in about five minutes. I will show you it sort of folded up in a minute. But there's a two inch thick mattress in here. You can leave your sleeping bags and pajamas and sort of toothbrush like things.
And this is a rain fly. If it's raining, if you take this off, there's actually uh, roof hatches, sort of skylights that are both either have mosquito nets, so you can watch the moon while you're sleeping or the stars. Um, and you can even stand up and get an even higher view. So the two person tents by Tapui are just, I think, four inches narrower than a double bed. Um, and the three person tents are queen length and just an inch or two wider than a double bed. Um, so you have to think about what kind of person you are and whether you have an infant or a child or how big your three people are. Three big adults might be cramped. Um, so on the other side, this window is right over the kitchen so you can serve your best friend's breakfast in bed really easily. Pass up a cup of coffee, which is pretty <coughs> funny and fun to do. Um, I don't, I'm not going to take the tent all the way down for you, but I'll show you how easy it is to do. So you take out these wires that hold the, the shade and rain flies up, and then you can use the ladder as a prop to hold this thing up. And then this is a big waterproof thing that zips around so you're, you're not driving something that's taking on water. And this all holds up neatly if you press the right buttons. All right. Not pressing the right buttons. Now I can demonstrate how useful it is to be able to climb up and do things. So the last step, if I had taken all the wires out, would be to unroll this and zip it up. I think that's your woolly bear tour. So it's the uh, baby of our family. We sell it directly because it's not an RV, and uh, our dealers tend to like selling RVs. And so this is for a. Uh, you is can a different go on animal. our website. You can see it all on our website. Now we're going to walk over to the tiger block. The next family member. Getting this is our 2020 tiger moth. It weighs, depending on how it's outfitted, between, I forget, 13. 140 pounds and just under 1,500, depending if you have all the accessories. This is our, <coughs> our two-person machine, although I will, in a minute, get up and walk around and tell you how you can put a rooftop tent on it so you can get more people or a guest house or a, your infant can turn into a, a toddler and have their own treehouse very soon. Um, all our products explore what comfortable camping is. This, you can't stand up inside, but you can sit up inside and be a big person. Um, and unlike a teardrop trailer where on a, a rainy day or if it's cold, you're almost lying down in a not very heavily fenestrated windowed environment, we have a whole side wall and the rear door open. So on the right day, you can really throw the walls open. And even if it's raining, you're not claustrophobic and you're not in a little rolling coffin. You're in a, a little screen porch with your best friend. Um, We've added a table this year for laptopping, for eating lunch, for hanging out on those rainy days. Um, it popped off just like all our other tables. <coughs> and you can stow the various parts. And this gives you more floor space, of course, but also lets you pull out the bed. Now we have here our double bed width queen bed length trailer. Uh, I keep doing things in the wrong order. If you're lucky enough to be in the right weather where you can throw open these doors, we have screen curtains that 
you can unroll <coughs> and velcro around the openings both in this big one but also at the front door. Um, we have a powered vent. It's hot. Water would be good. Thank you. Um, so if you have to sleep with the doors closed, you can still get great ventilation by turning on your 12 volt roof vent. And there's a window back here. So uh, you never feel claustrophobic. You're always happy. Um, we have the holes just like we have in our other products. And over here you can see we have bungee nets set up. So you could have one, two bungee nets on three and four and stuff your sleeping bag or sweatshirts or whatever it is you want up here. I don't think we have an official name for this, but I think of this as the mantelpiece. Um, so these stick up so you can put some books here with a rubber band and have a little bookshelf. There's a slot to put a tablet or a cell phone just as a little movie screen so you can sit and watch things. This is the power center, which you find in all our products, which handles the, um, if you're at home charging your battery, you're plugged into your garage or at a campsite, it handles the 110 volt and uh, also the 12 volt circuits and fuses. Um, there's generic storage, there's a voltmeter and a 12 volt outlet and USB outlets here too. And just like our other trailers, we have a, a red night light and a, a warm white ambient light and then a task light if you're sitting up reading a book or looking at something on your table set up. <coughs> um, a lot of people well, I don't know. People with dogs like this, the dog infant thing, they uh, fit in between you or next to you if you want. Um, you might notice a funny little sliced corner out of this end. And that's because if you are asleep and all the doors are open, you want to be able to put your muddy boots down here so you have enough room basically to tie your shoes. Or if it's muddy outside, you can still take off your shoes. It's, it's cramped, but it's possible. Because if we had filled this all in, you'd just be sort of separated from the floor. So let me make this back into a couch for a second, and I'll show you some of the other storage. Something is happening. It was hitting my tabletop. Okay, back in the couch. Can you see inside? So there's a big storage compartment that right now has table and the mosquito netting room for when you put the awning on this out. It seems to have two mosquito netting rooms. And this is another big storage compartment. Um, this is where the battery or batteries go and generic storage. So I, I think the really one of the cool things about this product is sitting here and being able to see kind of 180 degree slice of a, give me that camera. <laughs> Sorry for those of you out there shaking up, that you can sit on your porch and really look all the way around. Uh, and that's something you can't do in many trailers. Ah! Sorry, we've dropped our camera. Are you okay? My phone's okay. Um, why don't I close things up so you can see that? Or let's look at the kitchen drawer. This is what we call the kitchen drawer. Again, if you're not cooking, you don't have to put kitchen stuff in it. It has a big work surface that holds a stove plus other stuff. Um, this work surface is clipped onto the edge of the box. So it gives you access to this inside storage area where you can put anything you want. It has an adjustable grid in it, um, so you can put your pots and pans and make sure they fit. And then your stove can actually rest on top of that grid. So if you're cooking, your stove can be up here and you can still access spices and spoons and knives and foods. Um, but your stove can sit in there and is happy to ride there when you're closed up for driving. We have a five pound NATO can full of water for washing or drinking potentially. <clears throat> Underneath it is a cutting board lid with 
storage of more stuff. More stuff from our last trade show. So you can fill this totally full. You can have it be your dishes. You can decide all those things. Ow! This drawer has a lock on it. So if you're not parked quite level or if someone come and tries to push this while you're cooking, it has a safety lock on it. And then your kitchen is put away easily, quickly. Your door. Now back here, you can see our awning, which might be familiar. This pulls out about six feet, I believe. And you can make a mosquito net room that holds your kitchen and is big enough for two relatively modest camp chairs and a little table. So if it's raining or terrible out, you can still be totally enclosed and happy. Our step bumper on this product is over here. Again, holes for strapping things, uh, an extra can of fuel or water, or folding chairs, but also really to step up and get to your rack easily. So there are tracks for two load bars. What you put on your load bars is of course up to you. Boats or kayaks or a big tule box full of other equipment. Um, our fenders are strong enough to keep taking a step up uh, and really access your stuff. But then if you follow me around to the front of the trailer, we have an even better way to get up. So we have, it's not a bumper anymore, but a big step. So this step is sized for a lot of coolers. So you can store a cooler there or anything else. Um, you had a 12 volt bridge that you wanted to padlock here. There's a 12 volt outlet to be running that. But it's, it's also really a step. You can get this high to access stuff. You can stand on your cool box, you can stand on your cooler. We call this a cargo deck up here. It's kind of like a roof rack, but it's, it's um, related to the woolly bear. It has a lot of slots and holes in it that you can just strap more and more stuff depending on how big an expedition you're going on. I've mentioned a few times that a rooftop tent can fit on here. Um, the way you would do that, you have to imagine a sort of 50 inch by 50 inch rooftop tent box before you unfold it. This load bar gets mounted right here. And then the feet of the load bar have holes on the cargo deck. So you can put the rear load bar up here and carry your rooftop tent level. And then it unfolds over the front of the trailer to get your guest house attic cool thing. Um, I know I always end up sitting on my products because that's the kind of person I am. It's not unlikely that you would find me uh, sitting up here uh, looking at the sunset or at the far away, whatever it was that I was looking at. Um, there's a spare tire, there's a toolbox, uh, there's our holes everywhere to hang carabiners and keys or trash bags or clotheslines or whatever it is. <clears throat> um, what else should I say? Do you, do you know the Astros are in the World Series? That's the big <laughs> exciting thing. I should be wearing my Astros hat, but I'm not. Um, so was was there a question from the audience? Uh -huh. No? It's a weight. Uh, so I, the weight of this is, I think it's 1,340 pounds dry and then just under 1,500 pounds with awnings and the toolbox and other accessories and a battery in it. Um, so I've been touring you through our two smaller products. So it's, it's both a gradation in size and uh, at what point your camping happens always outside versus, versus inside, like in a mantis with an inside kitchen and a bathroom. Oh. Um, what are the... What is the fan inside? What? Oh, I think there's a question about our our 12 volt fan in the roof. It's a vent fan, um, and we have that because if you're in a place, say, with bears, where you don't want to sleep with the uh, just the screens in your windows, you want to shut the doors. But we have big windows, um, but you create a breeze and, and suck air through your trailer with the vent. That's the vent that's in the roof of the inside and it's it's 
a low profile vent, so it's underneath the load bar. So even if you have a load up there, you can still pop up your vent and get great ventilation. <coughs> um, they want you to talk about the weight differences between previous year models. Okay, I think there's a question about the evolution of the weight of the Tiger Moth. Um, I wonder what that... <coughs> there's, there's some bad information on the internet from a long while ago when we first introduced the Tiger Moth. We were, we were going to sell a really empty stripped down trailer with no furniture or anything else in it. Um, and that weighed 900 pounds. But really with cabinetry in it and uh, including cargo decks, uh, you, you end up in the 1300 pound area. So we've always wanted people to be tow it with things that are have a 1500 pound weight category. Um, and you can do that. and. It's, you know, really, if we're selling you a trailer that's 1,340 pounds, the next 150 pounds is, you know, that's kind of two bikes and two double bags and some food. Uh, if you're really loading up, you'll just get over that magic number for those vehicles. Uh, I think I think that answers the question that I'm guessing you're asking. Why is there some information that it's 900 and sometimes it's 1,300 or 1,500? So it depends whether people are talking about the empty shell from long ago, because we thought we were going to sell it that way. But really, these days, a Tiger Moth with furniture and a battery and an awning and everything is, is about 1,400 pounds. I think that will answer your question. Um, if not, of course, visit our website, taxoutdoors.com. Write us at customer service. Ask questions about use. or Does the 2020 Willy Bear have uh, brakes? And what kind of axle? Oh, back to the Wooly Bear. 2020 Wooly Bear does have brakes, electric brakes. Um, the type of axle it is, it's a torsion axle, which uh, I don't know how serious an answer, how lengthy an answer you want. Um, it's a common axle that does very well. It has independent arms. Um, it's not a true off-road axle with air suspension, but it gives you a great ride in a really a, a great number of places. Yeah. Will the risers be adjustable? The, uh, or this is another woolly bear question. Um, our risers are not adjustable. It wouldn't be hard to do that. Let's see. I had some questions and I'm trying to guess what the real impetus behind the question is. <coughs> When I was talking to you about this, I talked about weight distribution and how with a small trailer it's important for towing or aerodynamics or a few other things to, uh, to load it up the way you, you want it to be. Um, so I kept talking about how we have our risers, but you could always put the tent down here and then your tent's lower. Um, uh, some of our customers have made their own adjustable risers and that's really cool. We haven't done that because some of our customers are doing it, but also because we don't really know. If you have adjustable risers where the tent goes up and down, then you have no ability to store anything underneath the tent. Um, so that's why we haven't done it. But I think if you look through our owner's manual, I'd really tried to make diagrams saying, like, here's 164 ways you can load this thing. You know, you could put, you could not use your risers at all and put a two-person tent in a two-person tent. You could put bike racks up here and on the back. You can do all these things. So I always want to answer the question behind the question. So if you were driving cross country with this thing on highways, you might take off the risers and put your tent down lower because that's a better aerodynamic way to drive. If you're driving on a dirt road, you know, 15 miles down a dirt road mostly, or that's your big destination, then you want to say, hey, I where do I want my tent? Where do I want my bikes or kayaks? When I get there, um, how easy is it to, you know, if, if the tent's up here, then if you have two kayaks, they're slotted under here. Is that easier for me in that scenario? Or do I want to take a few minutes and undo eight bolts and rearrange things? Um, so we've heard this question before. So it, it's interesting, but my answer for it isn't necessarily our customer's answer for it. So we think that with some rearranging, you can do anything, but uh, sort of automating the arranging is a cool idea that we have certainly noted. Does it 
is the Tiger Moth have brakes? The Tiger Moth also has brakes. And uh, new in 2020, there aren't any pictures yet because it's really new. We're going to uh, offer a five pound propane tank. Come here, camera, I'll show you where it's gonna be. A five pound propane tank is about this size. And we're gonna mount a bracket right here. So there's a propane tank with a quick disconnect. So it'll be really close to power your stove <coughs> or any other propane accessories you want near your kitchen. A lantern, a stove, both at once. So it's gonna be here so it won't interfere with your step bumper. Um, and how soon will we have a picture of that? More like three weeks then tomorrow because we're going camping, some of us. Can you connect the Tiger Month to a campsite power or generator? Sure, so uh, I, I glossed over, I always talk about how when you're sort of off grid. But yes, all our trailers you can plug into a campsite on a Tiger Moth, those connections are up here. The Tiger Moth doesn't have a plumbed water system, we have the jerry can and it's sort of a field kitchen. Uh, but we have a <coughs> standard RV plug here, which is a 30 amp plug. If this is scares you because it doesn't look familiar, um, this is what RV campsite infrastructure expects. There's nothing in the trailer that needs this series of plugs, so you just get a little adapter to your normal three-prong grounded plug. And this is a solar panel outlet that we have. Um, if you have an air conditioner, it replaces this window. And then you need uh, short power, so a, a campground with a plug or an extension cord that's going to a generator or somewhere. <coughs> Any other questions? Is there a timber option for the Tiger Moth? There is not yet a timber option for the Tiger Moth. Um, if you want to do it before we get to it, call us up and we'll give you some advice. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, nice. we're getting into that because we're always listening to our customers because a, a timber and axle, for those who don't know, is, is a quite a serious and excellent off-road suspension. Um, and so for us, it's always balancing you know, the cost benefit performance. Uh, we don't only want to sell to people who want to drive 100 miles on dirt roads. We want to sell to people who are bombing across the country and all those things. So we try to go for a hefty medium. And then as, as we learn and adjust to, to talk to our customers about how many, what is our demographic? Is it, is it shifting or is there a part of it that's really like the, they've tweaked their Jeep or their Tacoma and they really are serious off-roaders and we want to talk to them to learn what they need because we like to think we found a sweet spot but there's always a sweet spot to a sweet spot so again send those kinds of questions to customer service at Taxa Outdoors and uh sales to who <laughs> Taxa sales it's okay oh I'm um, getting other AC options so the let's see Taxa sales Send questions to customer service at Taxa Outdoors about sales, about how your life might fit into any of our products. Um, and Kevin or I and someone else will answer your questions, whether it's about sales, whether it's about how to drive 50 miles down a dirt road, whether it's about how long you can be off grid or whether it's about, I don't know, how you get your grandchildren in a rooftop tent on the roof. Um, if you have an air conditioner, it's a window unit that hangs through this window. So this window sort of disappears uh, although you can always change back and forth if you decide you want one later. Um, and you need shore power, and shore power means an extension cord is plugging into something, a generator, a garage, a backyard, a campsite. And heat options? The heat options. for uh, We're always thinking about the cleverest heat options for this thing. Um, it's really small. It tends to be that the winter campers we know are quite warm and toasty when there are two of them inside a closed vehicle. Um, we've done some base, basic experiments with 12 volt electric blankets, and uh, there are numerous, there are numerous, there's a few companies that make uh, tent furnaces that run on little tiny one pound bottles of, of uh, propane that we have mounted in various places inside. And those furnaces are really pretty safe. They uh, turn themselves off if you knock them and if, if there's not enough oxygen to uh, burn. Um, so those, so with heat, there's, there's two questions. Generally, I've always heard people say, 
and I have been warm enough in the winter in here in my sleeping bag. Um, and then there's the, oh my God, it's cold. And like during those couple of hours of dinner or breakfast before I'm out on my hike or my biking ride, what, how do I stay warm? And uh, I, to date, have always used a little portable propane furnace, um, but we're always experimenting and figuring out, again, based on our customers, should we design in a gas furnace? We know how to do that. Uh, we've experimented with that, but the demand isn't there yet for us. So. Uh, be demanding if you want, but if it's just you, we're going to tell you how to do it as opposed to doing it for you. Um, but if it's a lot of you, then we'd be happy to do it for you. And we know, we know what we would do. Uh, that's all. We're, it's exciting for us in our interactions with ambassadors and customers to get these uh, fall, fall pictures and wintry pictures coming in, um, because we're in. Houston, Texas. We don't always get to camp in the winter. I've done, I've bombed through the country and on uh, road trips for trade shows and to meet people, but I haven't actually gotten to go in the mountains and spend three or four days at a campsite uh, being warm or cold or whatever. Uh, so uh, we lean on the experience of our customers at the same time that we're trying to outthink them, outthink you, and, uh, tell, and figure out what's going to work. So. Uh, send us that kind of information because we like it and use it. Uh, that's all. Follow us on Instagram, Taxa Outdoors, our website, taxaoutdoors.com. Customer service and sales questions. Uh, we like those. Check out our website because we have not only our dealers listed there, but our ambassadors. You might not live close to a dealer, but maybe one of our ambassadors lives close to you and would love to make an arrangement to show you their, their unit. So you can get an idea of our, our quality and our value proposition and uh, get some inside scoop on how different lifestyles fit into our products. Um, I think that's it. Send in last ditch questions or uh, write them. Customer service, taxoutdoors.com. We will get back to you. Thanks so much.